Peace and blessings, Israel, the Most High, in the name of Christ and Nazareth, bless us all. We're going to start from the book of James, chapter 1. The book of James, chapter 1. James chapter 1 and verse 1 says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So James, an apostle of, 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 of the Lord Jesus Christ, a servant of the Most High, had wrote this, this letter and this exhortation. And it was for all the 12 tribes that were repenting and following Christ that were scattered abroad. So they were being exhorted in this greeting to, as we're going to read, to endure temptation and trials. So let's read verse 2. My brethren. So who is James' brethren? The 12 tribes of Israel repenting in Christ which are scattered abroad greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So these are, this scripture is going into the, the trials of many sorts, the different tests and trials that we go through in our everyday life in serving the Most High in Christ. When we're going through temptations, different and many different trials, we're to count it joy. Joy when we're experiencing different temptations and trials. So why, why, why would we count it a joyful thing when we're going through different temptations and trials. And the, the reason why I say fall into diverse, meaning you can't, you can't avoid them. You can't, we can't avoid temptation and trials. Our faith is going to be tried in serving the Most High in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So the, the different temptations and trials is the ones that every day we experience and there's no way around it. So we have to endure and overcome temptations and we have to have a positive mind state filled with one of the fruits of the Spirit which is joy. And the reason being is going to tell us in verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So when we're going through different trials of, of many kinds, different adversities, different, different battles, different trials. We have to understand that the, 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 there's the Most High is trying our faith, meaning he's examining our faith. And in trying our faith, he's trying to teach us to be patient. See, so we don't want to make haste in the time of trouble and get out the spirit and to the point where Everything that has been taught onto us in the in the in the in the time of temptation trials has already gone in one ear out the other. We don't want to get to that point. That's what happens a lot of times. Panicking, um, overreacting. You know, these are things. These are these are these are the works of the flesh. These are things that we always have to be on guard against. As the Most High is trying our faith, we have to learn to be patient. Like Joshua and Caleb, the 40 years Israel wandered in the wilderness, they had to endure many temptations 
many trials, many afflictions, many adversities. And if, and if they didn't have that spirit to endure faithfully, patiently abiding in the Most High's commandments, they would have never made it to the promised land. Okay, those, those two brothers, Joshua, the son of Nun of the tribe of Ephraim and Caleb, that brother was from the tribe of Judah, both them brothers, you know, they, they were the only two men that made it across the Jordan River into the promised land that left out of Egypt that was from the age of 20 and up. So when Israel came out of Egypt, all the men of Israel were numbered from 20 and up. All of them died in the wilderness except Joshua and Caleb because they patiently endured temptations and trials. And they looked at the temptations and trials as a positive thing with all joy because they saw every test and trial that came their way one by one and during patiently, it was building their spirit. It was building their faith. So when the next temptation and the trial came, they were on a, on a high level to know that, okay, this is the next trial. This is the next phase of temptation and trials. The Most High, He's ordained this for us. You know, we, we got to look at it positive. The Most High going to build us to endure and overcome. We just got to be patient. See? So that's what... That's why we're to count it all joy when we go through different temptation trials, the trials of many kinds, because the Most High is trying our faith. And in trying our faith, one of the results that is going to produce is patience within us if we stay in the scriptures. So every day we have temptations and trials. And the Most High, through Christ, you know, through the Spirit of the Most High in Christ, different lessons go out every day, you know, um, especially for the ones of us that's fellowship in, you know, in the Apostles' Doctrine and, 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 and fellowship and in breaking the bread and in prayers. Different lessons go out every day, you know, uh, every Sabbath. There's different lessons, and, and within one lesson, there are several many lessons to learn within that one lesson, see? And that'd be the most high through Christ, you know, teaching us, exhorting us, and many times warning us. But a lot of times when the scriptures be going out, we're not applying them, and that'd be a, a big problem in Israel. That'd be a big problem for us. We're not applying scriptures because we're fixed in our ways. So although we're being exhorted in the different lessons that go out, we continue in our, you know, leaning upon our own understanding, dealing in pride, not being corrected, continuing in our lust and foolishness, and we're never going to spiritually grow that way. Okay? When the most high scriptures be cutting us, we're to be counting it with joy and patiently endure the temptations and trials we go through. We don't want to be like a tell us in Ecclesiastes 2, making haste in the time of trouble. Tell us that. Let's, let's read that part, Ecclesiastes 2 and 1. In the Apocrypha, Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Apocrypha Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1. I mean, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, I'm sorry. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Let's see what it says. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So, when we're truly coming to repent from our sins, and be baptized in water 
under the power and authority of the Christ of Nazareth that sitteth on the right hand of Father. And we spiritually understand the physical thing that we're doing, the thing that we're doing outwardly, the faith that we're demonstrating outwardly. When we, when we spiritually understand what this baptism is all about, meaning our old man being dead and buried in that water, and a new man rising out that water. Because that's what water baptism is symbolic of. It's the death and burial of the old man. And us coming out that water is, is symbolic of, of, the, of, of, the, of being joined to the resurrection of Christ. In, in, in baptism, we're joined unto his death. So he that knew no sin became sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him. That's a process. And, and coming out that water symbolic of us being joined unto the resurrection of Christ. So as Christ rose from the dead, we're to come out that water walking in newness of life. We cannot entertain the sins of the past or new temptations or trials. Or we're trying to be not letting go of certain um, lusts within us. Pride, covetousness, worldliness, anger, lust, fornication, adultery, any worldliness. You know, and, and still trying to have the best of both worlds, trying to serve two masters. We're never going to spiritually grow like that. So we have to be committed to walking in newness of life. That's why I tell us, my son, if I come to serve the Lord, if we come to serve the Most High by being faithful and obedient to the Most High, we are to follow Christ. So we repent from sin and are baptized in water. What must we do? Prepare thy what? soul for temptation, meaning we have to prepare our mind, our soul, our spirit for what? Temptations that's going to come our way. So, in preparing our soul for temptation, we understanding what this baptism is about. How we must put off the old man. That old man must be dead and buried in that water. And we must come out that water walking in newness of life. That's the commitment on our part. See, when, when that commitment is on our part, it tells us in the book of James that when we draw nigh to God, he draw nigh to us. See, so we do our part, the most I do his part. We got to prepare for temptation. That's, that's why uh, I'm, I'm kind of like jumping back and forth a little. We, we was in James... Um, one and um three, going to Ecclesiastes two and one. I want to make this point real quick. This is James four and eight because this is this right here. This is this is the simplicity in Christ that we do not want our minds to be corrupted from. Sometimes we make this truth more difficult than it needs to be because we allow we we give place to the devil. We have to learn how to simplify our walk. And this is a great scripture to simplify what repentance is all about. So that if we focus on this, we on the right track. This is James 4 and 8. It says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. See? So if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. How are we preparing ourselves for temptation? Like it tells us in Ecclesiastes 2 and 1. Like Peter, through the Spirit of the Most High, commanded us, repent from sin and be baptized in water. For remission of sins, that we may receive the gift of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of the that continual cleansing with the washing of water by the Word. See, because when we in that Spirit, that's how we draw nigh to God. See, draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. See, so there's our part, and the Most High does His part. So if we're not doing our part, the most I'm not going to do his part. So that's how we simplify things. 
Why am I getting nowhere? Why I keep falling into temptation and trials? Because we're not applying the simplicity in Christ. See, verse 7 is key to the A verse. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God. So, when, like we read in Ecclesiastes 2 and 1, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So when, just like the Lord, when he got baptized in water, it tells us in the book of Mark that the spirit immediately led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. Immediately. So all those sins that we're confessing in that water or the sins that we're confessing leading up to that moment, going into the water. To begin our path of being born of water and of the spirit. We have to have the mind frame of being committed to put these sins off. And we can't do it without the most high in Christ. That's why I said draw an eye to God and he will draw an eye to you. So if we feel within ourselves we're not experiencing God drawing nigh to us, it ain't something wrong with the most high. It's, it's something within us that's holding us back. See, let's prove that. Let's hold this right here, right? Because it go right with Isaiah 59 and 1. So we're holding a few scriptures, but they all tie together. So let's see here. Let's go to... Um, where were we? Um, what scripture should I just say? Uh, oh, Isaiah 59 and 1. Let's go to Isaiah 59 and 1. Isaiah, the prophet. Chapter 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand, the Most High's hand, is not shortened that it cannot save. So the Most High don't have a short hand that he can deliver us and save us and help us and guide us. Neither is his ear heavy. That it cannot hear. So the Most High is not a God that's going deaf or is deaf and can't hear our prayers. So what's the problem then? But your iniquities, meaning when we give our mind over to sinful thoughts and we fulfill those sinful thoughts, once that sin takes motion, and we fulfill those sinful thoughts. Now we caught up in what? Iniquity. Meaning we're reaping what we sow. Because of sin. That's why I said, but your iniquities have separated. Between you and your God. And your sins. Unrepented sin. Have hid his face from you. That he will not what? Hear. Now, let's read this again. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So check out what we just read in Isaiah 59 and 2, right? Hold, We're going to hold that. Let's go back to that scripture in James. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. The Most High is not a man, he should lie. If we draw nigh to the Most High, repenting with the intentions to get ourselves right with the Most High in Christ, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh unto you. The Most High will draw nigh unto us. But here's the key. Cleanse your hands, ye what? Sinners. So we have to put off sin. Where does sin begin? It, it tells us when you read in, in the first chapter, when it's when it talking about sin. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and what? And enticed, see? So every man is tempted to sin when he's drawn away from the commandments, from, from the Most High in Christ and the commandments of his what? His own desires. 
and enticement allow itself to be enticed. So we can't blame other people. Can't even blame the devil because the devil can only go as far as we let him. That's why scripture says, neither give place to the devil. So going back to this point in James 4, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double what? Minded. See, that'd be our problem. Double mindedness. So we have to purify our minds. That when they say purify your heart, our minds. You gotta let the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High Christ, in these scriptures purify our mind from being double minded. Double minded meaning we're not, we're not, because when you read like the Lord commanded Joshua, He said, "Don't turn to the right or to the left of what I commanded you." You gotta stay in the scriptures. So when we don't stay in the scriptures, they're showing us that we're double-minded. And Christ said, no man can serve two masters. Elijah taught Israel, how long halt you, he asked the question, how long halt you between two opinions? How long halt ye between two opinions? How long halt ye between two opinions? If the most high is if the if the most high is a true God, worship him. If y'all believe that he's Baal, worship him. Make your mind up. That's what Elijah was saying. This double mindedness is no good. Who you gonna serve? Make up your mind. Y'all down with the most high or not? If you can't be double minded. That's what Elijah was telling Israel. They didn't say a word. So the Most High had to step in. I'm going to show them who's the true God. The Most High sent a fire and consumed all of, of Elijah's sacrifice. And the people praised the Most High and said, the, the God of Israel, he's the true God. See, and that, that was, you know, Elijah in, in a great ministry, similar to John the Baptist. He, 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 he was, he was, he was, bringing them back to the most high. See, so we need that revival <laughs> spirit that, you know, the most high through these scriptures come out and check us so that we, our hearts come out of that double mindedness. So it says, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Draw an eye to God and he'll draw an eye to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And what did we just read in Isaiah 59 and 1? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot what? Save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not what? Hear. So if we're dealing in unrepented sin, you know, and we're just going through the motions of praying and the Most High helping us. It's not that the Most High can't hear us. It's not that the Most High's hand is short and that it cannot save. It's that, you know, like John told, he, when he dealt with the Pharisees and them, the, the, the Pharisees and scribes, he said, look, if you're going to come, come clean, come correct. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? There's a wrath to come. What y'all doing? Y'all here for the right reasons? We're supposed to be repenting. That's, that's the, every Israelite, we're supposed to be about repenting. Not mixing the world with our walk in Christ. Now, when we say the world, we're talking about partaking in the sins of this world. Because now we're, now we, now we, now we subject to what's written here in Isaiah 59 and 1. It be our own sins that be a stumbling block unto us. Where the Most High hide His face from us, that He will not hear our prayers. It's not that He can't hear our prayers; He hear our prayers. But yeah, another scripture that says, "He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination." So you know, when we praying and worshiping the Most High, we, we have to be of a broken and contrite spirit. We got to be humble. We have to be, 
truly dedicated towards what we're reading here in, in James, the fourth chapter. And what is that? Drawing nigh to God so that he draw nigh to us. So that, that we got to come clean. That's why I say cleanse your hands, you sinners. Come clean. Come repenting. With the mind state to mind frame to put away sin. And purify your hearts. Meaning purify your minds, you double minded. Purify your minds from double mindedness. It's like we, there's a side of us that want to serve the most high in Christ. And we know that it's right deep down inside. But we also want to fulfill our, you know, desires to be worldly. And, and somehow make it like it's scripture. That's dangerous. We, we cannot deal with any type of worldliness and sin, devil doctrines, and, and serve the Most High in Christ. We can't make that scripture. That's having our own Bible when we do that. We, we, we got our own doctrine. We dictate the doctrine. That's, that's not what Christ commanded. He said to follow him, deny yourself. Or else we can't be his disciple. So what is it that we have to deny ourselves of? All that worldliness that we're supposed to be truly repentant from. If we're mixing it with our walk in the most high in Christ, then what are we being? Double-minded. That's why I say be afflicted and mourn and weep. Meaning we got to afflict ourselves because of sin. Be of that broken, contrite spirit. We have to mourn. We have to weep. Let your laughter, meaning our laughter and sin and foolishness, pride talk, be turned to what? Mourning. So we're not mourning and we're letting, we're continuing in our laughter and in our sins, not afflicting ourselves and mourning and weeping. What are we doing? Resisting God. And your joy, meaning our joy in, in the foolishness that we take pleasure in, to what? Heaviness. So we got to be of a broken, contrite, heavy spirit. To the point where, where we, we say, you know what, I, 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 I got to repent. I don't feel right. Humble yourselves. See, that's the key. This is where, this is right here telling us where we fall, where we fail, because we're not humbling ourselves. See, and when we humble ourselves, it's supposed to be in the sight of who? The Most High. You ain't here to prove to this brother and that brother and this sister, that sister, that you really about the scriptures. We could, we could fool each other. You know, Instagram, Facebook, even in, the, in each other's presence, we, we can be fake. We got to humble ourselves to the most high. That's who we're supposed to be fearing and trembling. The Lord. The most high in Christ. And he shall lift you up. See, so the Lord Christ sitting on the right hand of the Father, he going to lift us up. But we got to humble ourselves by being afflicted and mourning and weeping for these sins that we're mixing with our walk in the Most High. And letting our laughter be turned to what? Mourning. We're supposed to be mourning. And our joy and wickedness, it's got to be turned to what? Heaviness. David said, a broken and contrite spirit, O God, thou will not despise. Mosiah said he don't dwell in temples made with hands. He dwell with them of a broken and contrite spirit. You know what the word contrite means? Remorseful for sin. That's what this is going into. So we're struggling in this walk and we feel and the Lord is showing us that we're being double-minded. This is the path right here. It's not complicated. This is the path to repentance. This is the simplicity in Christ that we're not to be Corrupted from. There's no magic scriptures. There's no 80th council. It's the simplicity and the most is we got to take heed to the scriptures. 
Sometimes we don't understand why we're going through things and we're not paying attention. A lot of times the lessons and the, the scriptures that be going out, the lessons is telling us, it's, it's correcting us right there, dead on the spot. And if we're not humbling ourselves, we're not going to see ourselves. We can say all praises and all praises to this brother's, uh, to, you know, this lesson, this brother's lesson, all praise to the Most High in Christ, hallelujah, all praises this, all praises that. That's just lip service. That's why in the, in the fourth chapter it says this. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is what? Sin. We have to apply the scriptures. Not just be hearers only. Not applying the scriptures is sin. And a lot of times the struggles we go through in this walk, it's scriptures that we already know. It's scriptures that's been taught. And we're trying to figure out, you know, what's wrong. And, our, and then we complicate matters because we make making haste in the time of trouble. So we're getting all double-minded out the spirit. And we're trying to figure out, you know, what's wrong. We're making it harder than it needs to be. We have to apply the scriptures. Struggles within ourselves, struggles in marriage, friendships, parenting. The scriptures been going out, going out. Every Sabbath class, the, the weekday classes, different lessons, different topics, different topics. Then you got little... Within that one lesson, be like two, three, four, five, six, seven different lessons. Spirit hitting on all things. So none of us is above the scriptures. So we, we listen, we take heed, we read the scriptures on our own, meditate upon them, reflect upon them, and always look in the aspect I can better myself in the application of that scripture. But the scriptures go out on the Sabbath, different lessons. I remember in Boston last summer, or not, not even, about six, seven different lessons on marriage. Week after week, bam, bam. Week one, two, three, six, seventh week. <laughs> Going into marriage. All the scriptures go out. What are we doing? To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Scripture's going out on patience. Not mixing other doctrines with our walk in the Most High in Christ. Not listening to these false teachers in Israel. Scriptures go out. What are we doing? The problem is this right here. We're not applying the scriptures. That's the problem in Israel. We're not applying the scriptures. And we can't say, well, I don't know what's going on. Scripture's been going out. The lesson go out. Then a lot of times we call it brothers, brother, I need help with this, sister. Okay. Did you listen to the Sabbath class today? Yeah. Well, I can't say more than that. The scriptures went out. We got to apply the script. Israel, I don't know what it is with us. We, we looking for some magic scripture to come out. Oh my God, that's the scripture. All praises. Ain't no new scripture. It's, this, it's the simplicity in Christ. We go to this brother, or that sister, we need help. Okay, they come with the scriptures. Well, things are not getting better. Well, let me talk to this brother, or sister. Okay, things not getting better. Every person we go, they're giving us the same scriptures, more or less. What's our problem? We're not applying the scriptures. That's the problem. To, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, because the scriptures be going out in the lessons all the time. And doeth it not. Not because he didn't, because he's ignorant. Not because he, I don't know, I don't know what to do. No. We're choosing not to do it. To him, it is what? Sinning. 
We are sinning when we know the scriptures, but we're not doing them. We're not applying them. And we don't apply them. Now we're dealing with iniquity. We're dealing in sin. So we're struggling, not getting anywhere. Backsliding. Things are getting worse. Now Satan all up in our minds. Because that double-mindedness now is no more double-minded. Our mind is going right back into the worldliness. You got to shut Satan down. We have to apply the scriptures. Every Sabbath class. Every Sabbath the scriptures go out. During the weekday classes. Different topics. Different lessons. On all different levels. Marriage, patience, finances, <laughs> um, health, fleeing from devil doctrines, be aware of false teachings that's going to make us worldly. And what do we do? We know that we hear the scriptures. Some of them even say amen, all praises. They'll type it in the lesson. Boston class, all praises. I needed these scriptures. Five minutes later, temptation trial come. Scriptures already been out one ear, out the other. Why? Because to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So we're not applying the scriptures. We're sinning by not applying the scriptures. And we know better. That's the whole point. We know better. So it's like we're the scriptures is going in one ear out the other. And that's that's what the first chapter going to. James, the first chapter and 22, it says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Why? Because to him that knoweth to do good, and do if it not, to him it is what? Sin. But be ye doers of the word. So the word goes out. We read the word. Some of us will quote scriptures. Some of us may even teach scriptures. Once we post scriptures on Instagram and social media, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it may be. Are you sharing scripture with another brother, sister on the side or what a conversation? We better make sure that we're doing it. Because we're teaching. Anytime I post a scripture or a brother, sister post a scripture and we press enter, we're teaching. What are we doing? Well, we can't, well, teach against stealing and we hate it. Teaching against covetousness and we're dealing with devil doctrines. We can't teach against eating swine's flesh and how the churches are off, but there's abomination going on in our home. No, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving who? Not the most high in Christ, your own self. Your, and that's see, that's the trick trickery of Satan that. Because, because we're not being humble and we're filled with pride. We're not seeing ourselves, see? Deceiving your own self, meaning we're not seeing ourselves. We're not getting over on nobody. We're deceiving ourselves. I mean, we, you, we can fool man, we can't fool the most high. Because we can fool one another, but we cannot fool the most high. When it comes down to it, the only one we're deceiving is ourselves. So let's read again. Be doers of the word, meaning apply the scriptures. And not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, in other words, basically the scriptures go in one ear or the other. He is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. So it's talking about like a looking glass or a mirror. For he beholdeth himself, and he looks in the mirror. Goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner he was. 
So that's us on a spiritual level where we hear the scriptures. We'll say Khan and all praises and beautiful lesson, brother. Man, that, that class in Cali, that was, man, that was on point. All praises. All right. Temptation trials. Five minutes later, the next day, three days later. We took all them notes. They're in our notebook. We, we pressed heart, like, 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 when the scripture went out, right? Okay, now here's the trial. This is where we fail a lot of times. The trial comes, we go right into double-mindedness. We make haste in a time of trouble. We go back into the flesh. And what comes from that? Strife, arguments. Because understand, when we make haste in the time of trouble, we're breaking the scriptures. So we don't want to be someone that, we. it's like we look in the mirror, then we walk away and forget what, what we're supposed to be about. What we're supposed to be reflecting, what we're supposed to be about. We can't forget what we're supposed to be about. That's the point. We can't forget who we are supposed to be. So we have to make sure that we apply the scriptures. That's the point of what he's saying. Um, Ezekiel 33 also speaks on this. So this is the Lord speaking to the prophet Ezekiel. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people, meaning uh, Ezekiel's people are the children of Israel. That's his people. Still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. So when you look in the reference column, right, when it says talking against thee in verse four, it says, or of thee. So in other words, the Lord's telling Ezekiel, look, your brothers, the children of your people, they, they, they're talking of thee. And let's see what they were saying about Ezekiel. And speak one to another, every one of his brothers, saying, come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. So you would have Ezekiel's people, Israel, speaking of Ezekiel, in the doors of their homes, and what would they be saying amongst each other? Man, you got to hear this brother Ezekiel and how the Most High be speaking through that brother. Hear what the word of the Lord is that cometh forth from the Lord through this brother Ezekiel. So the Lord was telling Ezekiel, this is what they're saying about you. And they come unto thee as the people cometh. So Ezekiel would teach and the people would assemble before Ezekiel. And they sit before thee as my people. So they would come before Ezekiel and hear Ezekiel teach. As the most High's people. And they hear thy words. So they hear what Ezekiel's saying. What is what this, you know, what? Because it, it's not Ezekiel's words. It's the most High's words that he's speaking to the people. So they hear thy words, but, 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 but. They will not, what? Do them. What do we read in James 4? To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin. So a lot of the struggles that we go through in our walk in Christ, a lot of times is self-afflicted. Self-inflicted, self I should say, rather. Because the scripture has been going out. In the lessons. And sometimes one on one. 
sometimes even in councils. And the same issue keeps coming up again and again and again. So what are we going to deal with again and again and again? Not some magic scripture. Oh, well, here, maybe this scripture here in the book of Job, the 33rd chapter in the middle, maybe, maybe that's going to be the cure. No, it's the simplicity in Christ. We're not applying ourselves in it. We're not applying the simplicity in Christ. We will not do them. We hear the words, but we don't do them. Correction go out, one-on-one, -on -one, or sometimes it'd be in the lesson. For example, let's say the brothers in Cali, just like Ezekiel, going into the scriptures, the spirit of Most High in Christ, hitting on different topics. Brothers going into a, a, a lesson on idolatry, it's going into five minutes later, it's hitting home on something else, on another sin or something that this most high want the spirit to, to deal with. And we're like, damn, man, I'm getting cut. Okay, what are we going to do about it, though? Are we going to repent or are we going to continue in sin? Are we going to draw nigh to God that he'll draw nigh to us? Are we going to cleanse our hands from sins and stop being double-minded? The choice is ours. What are we choosing? Are we, are we choosing to apply the scriptures or are we just going to be hearers? Who are we deceiving? Ourselves. It don't matter how many scriptures we quote. We can go on Facebook, quote a hundred scriptures. Who are we fooling? The man in the mirror that forgot what man of person he ought to be. And as they and they come on to thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. Shalom, shalom, hey, 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 Shabbat shalom. All right, all right, let's hear the scriptures. They hear thy words, but they will not what do them. For with their mouth, they show much love. All praises. All praises to the most high Christ. A P T M H N C. Enter. Bam. <laughs> Should we praise the most high in Christ? Scripture says we can't praise him enough. But let's be for real about it, though. Let's be about it. For with their mouth they show much love. All praises to the most high in Christ. These scriptures was on point. Oh, man, what a lesson, man. I love these lessons. Five minutes later, you, we're drunk, fighting with our wife. Wrestling match, hospital, so there's a sister going to hospital. What's going on? Five minutes later, we're dealing with whatever lust that we have not put off. Hatred that we're not putting off. Devil doctrine, we just can't let go of that devil doctrine. We just, we, it'd be spirits, be spirits on us. This is a spiritual battle. We entertain in sin, it needs to be spirits tied to whatever sin we entertain in, and them spirits just increase more and more. So it says, and they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love. All praises to the Most High in Christ, the, the Most High this, and Christ that, the truth this, the apostles' doctrine this, and all praises, and this is a beautiful lesson. But their heart goeth after their what? Covetousness. Covetousness is as idolatry. So can you sit before the Most High as his people and hear his words and be an idolater? Yes, we can. If our heart is going after our covetousness. If our heart is going after covetousness, and we're fulfilling our desires to deal in devil doctrines. If we're fulfilling our desires to, we want to still want to smoke weed and get high, get drunk, deal with false doctrines, fulfill our lust to, to, for, to be fornicating, committing adultery, idolatry, defiling the Sabbath day, eating swine's flesh, 
coveting that which is your brother's, coveting after your brother's wife, lying, false witness, bearing false witness, you know, on and on, all, all they don't fulfilling these lusts. This is not true worship of the Most High here. Now check out verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice. So every one, every one of us has a song that we just love to hear. <laughs> it could be a male or a female singer. And when you hear, man, you're like, oh my, it's like you love that song. You love that voice. It makes you feel good. That's what the Lord is saying about Ezekiel. He told, he told Ezekiel, look, when you speak, it's like a lovely song they're hearing. Lo, thou art unto them, meaning Israel, as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice. Right? And can play well on an instrument. Okay? So, there are ones that can play an instrument very, very well. Where you just, you locked in. And you just love hearing, it could be a trumpet, it could be a harp, it could be a guitar, it could be a piano. And it's something that you love to hear. An instrument that you love to hear. That's what the Lord said about Ezekiel when it came to Israel. They love to hear you. So you can understand, it's like you're onto them as a very lovely song, one that hath a pleasant voice or is one that can play well on instrument. For they hear thy words. They hear what you're saying. They hear the scriptures. They're hearing the commandments. They're hearing the exhortation. And when you read about Ezekiel, Ezekiel was dealing with a lot of issues within the body of Israel. But they do not. They do them not. <laughs> That's why earlier in the chapter, the Lord already told Ezekiel, look, they're not going to listen to you. They don't even listen to me. You think they're going to listen to you? <laughs> this people is hard-headed. So we see this. Sadly, in, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. That's because that's when you read the book of James 1, when he was calling in that chapter of James 4, we didn't get the verse in verse 4. We was reading verse 8. When he called Israel adulterers and adulteresses, when, when you really examine that, going back to the first chapter, he was talking about Israelites, brothers and sisters that's supposed to be in the Most High in Christ. That's who that's going into. Israelites that were not enduring patiently the tests and trials. They weren't, like, because remember we were reading that joyfully, we're to take it joyfully, the, the trials of many kinds. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. But what was happening, Israel was not being patient. They weren't patiently abiding in the scriptures and applying them. They were being very, very worldly. They were mixing their walk in the Most High in Christ with their covetousness. So uh, what was happening amongst the churches was they was doing like an Israelite version of the worldliness that they were to be repentant from. So it's not like they, they wasn't, they weren't really fully putting off their lusts and desires to put off the world. So they were fulfilling it amongst one another in the body of Christ. And then what was happening in the book of James 4 and 1? Fightings and wars. It's just the church was out of order. And when the church is out of order, now it gets deeper than that. 1 Corinthians 11. Now there's sickness, double-mindedness, death in the church. These were the real issues that was happening. That's why Paul had to step in and he had to rebuke them in the spirit to say, look, what, is, what are y'all doing <laughs> with the communion? It's out of order. That, that church at Corinth. It was out of order on so many levels because of worldliness. And they were bringing that worldliness and mixing it in their walk in the Most High in Christ. 
And that's not going to get us anywhere in this faith. We have to repent. That's the point. We have to let go of that worldliness. We cannot do the Israelite version of what we were doing in the world. That'd be a big problem amongst us in Israel. So, and when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. So everything that Ezekiel would tell them, when it came to pass, they would know, oh, everything Ezekiel said came to pass and it was right. See? But because they didn't do what Ezekiel was telling them, they eating the fruit of their doings, and then they real it's like they realize in a hard way, man, everything he said was true. All the prophets, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, man, they all they was doing was to Israel, they but like, man, these prophets keep getting on us. <laughs> you know, we could feel like them lessons that be coming up, man, again, yeah, again. Because we we that church, we that we these people right here. We talk a good game. We say all praises and hallelujah and all this stuff. But show me how it's shot. See, all praises, though, you know, and but if our heart is going after our covetousness, what does that mean? To be an idolatrous. So now when we go back to James 4, this is what we got to do. We can't be corrected in the scriptures by us, you know, incorrect. Just sometimes we just reading the scriptures on our own. The scriptures be cutting us. That'd be the spirit. We got to repent. Oh, you being corrected by another brother or sister? Hey, look, brother, sister, look, you, you know, you need to do, look, you need to look at that, put away this, put away that, you're entertaining this, you got to put that away. Or it could just be in the lessons. Scriptures go out, you're like, wow, you know what, I'm doing that. I got it's, what are we going to do? We're going to repent, we're going to take it personal. Oh, he's talking about me. I know that brother's talking about me. I'm going to text him right now. <laughs> Stop that, Israel. Stop that. Okay, who are we fearing? If the script, if, if the script's going out and points are being made and we're doing that, what are we supposed to be doing? Repenting. One thing Israel we fail to understand is that the Holy Spirit is running the churches. A lot of Israel do not understand that. So when the scriptures go out, they act like we acting like, well, I ain't gotta really, I ain't gotta do that. At least one we ain't we all gotta do that. All the scriptures that go out, we all gotta do them. Well, I'm not going to go that far. We keep playing games with the Most High in Christ. We tempting the Most High. It's, and the Most High's power, when we try it, it, it will prove if done wise. The Most High shames, though, that, shames those that try his power. That's why Paul was telling the Israelites, let be not fornicators, idolaters, and murmurers, as some of them were, and were destroyed in the wilderness. Why he had to say that? Because the same stuff that was going on in the wilderness was going on amongst the church in Christ. You understand? Because we're not looking at ourselves to change. We got to look in the mirror. That's where the change starts for the better of all Israel. It starts with us. So going back to this point, we're going to end it here. This is James 4. And verse 7. This is it right here. So we're going to hear. This is James 4 and 7. This is, this is one of the main scriptures right here. You struggling in this walk? It's going to always come back to scriptures like this, Israel. It's always going to come back to scriptures like this. 
we make this truth harder than it needs to be. It look, our temptations and trials, you know, it's hardness that we have to endure, but it, it's got to be for for suffering for righteousness' sake. So the path to the kingdom is going to have its own struggles that are ordained of the Most High to spiritually grow as a, as brothers and sisters, but. We make it more difficult than it needs to be because we're not applying the scriptures. And a lot of times we, we seek for help. And it'd be the same issues over and over and over again. So it's going to come back for the seventh time. All right, well, look. Look, brother. Look, sister. It could be marriage issues. Look. It's going to go back to Ephesians 5. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. It starts right there. You ain't going to get nowhere till that starts. The, the, the man, oh, well, my wife, this, look. What about starting with husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church? Why don't we understand what that's saying? Read about Christ and the church. Then you see, man, that's how I got to be. Wow. Okay. Let me ground myself in that. See? But if we not doing that, now we have an issues. Why are we seeking counsel? Why, and, and it's not just marriage, it could be anything. Why are we seeking counsel? We're not listening to begin with. The scriptures say, if thou, thou if thou be wise and shalt apply thyself, and if you apply yourself, thou shalt be prudent. So a lot of times we want help and it's going to come back to the same scriptures. The simplicity in Christ. There ain't going to be no scripture, a new scripture. Be like, all right, all right, we're dealing with this situation for the fourth time. All right. Read it again. The simplicity in Christ. And then sometimes it'd be like, Oh, all oh, praises. Oh, oh, wow, man. Yeah, I needed to hear that. Two weeks later, same situation, dealing with it. Wait a minute. How many times are we going to keep hearing the same scriptures over and over? This ain't ignorance no more. Now this is, now we're being self-willed. We're being presumptuous. It's not like a secret sin, something that we're not aware of, because we to pray for that too. Sometimes we're going through things and we, we don't know what's it's like, man, I don't, I'm not and oh man, I didn't know it like that. I didn't know the scripture like that. Wow. Oh man, I didn't look at it. That scripture, that scripture there, man, wow, that really, man, that's right. That's a man, that's on point. But more often than not, it's 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 scriptures that already been went out. That's why it's kind of peculiar sometimes. Like, oh, man, I really needed that scripture. And sometimes as a brother try to help you, like, wait a minute. Like, the brother went over this the, two days ago on the Sabbath class. So it just shows it's a problem. It's a problem to him that knoweth to do good because the scriptures go out and do if it not. Meaning we're not applying the scriptures. To him it is what? Sin. Meaning willful sin. So we have to look and say, you know what? I got to start applying the scriptures. But when we don't apply the scriptures, or we apply certain scriptures, but we don't want to let go of certain lusts, so we kind of like, we got our own religion, we got our own Bible. Where do we expect to go in this walk? Not very far, Israel. Not very far. We're not, we're not going to spiritually grow that way. We have to repent. So this is how we do it. James 4 and 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, he will flee. So when we're going through temptations and trials, adversities, the trials of many kinds, like it told us in James 1 and 3, 1 and 2 and verse 3, what are we supposed to be doing? Submitting ourselves to do the will of God and fighting Satan. But we oftentimes do it backwards. We fighting God and giving place to the devil. So we resisting God, but submitting to the devil. Submitting to the devil, resisting God. 
Would we not all agree that that's backwards, Israel? Are, are we not going backwards, Israel? If we're resisting God and submitting to the devil, how do we submit to the devil? It, it tell us in the first chapter. Blesses the man that endureth temptation, meaning blesses the man that endureth temptations and trials throughout his whole life. For when he is tried, meaning every one of us is going to be tried. Our faith is going to be examined. And in, in, in these trials of many kinds, our faith is going to be examined to see whether we're going to keep the Most High's commandments or not. So if we endure to the end, what does it say? He being in the brother that endures temptation and trials, it's a lifetime process. We fall sometimes, but we got to what? Humble ourselves and repent. That's one thing with the Lord Christ. He gives us opportunity to repent many times, but we don't want to, you know, we don't want to continue in sin and think that grace is going to abound. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. That's immortality. Which the Lord, that's Christ, hath promised to them that what? Love him. The Lord Christ promised us that if we love him and we endure temptation and trials, that we're going to obtain eternal life in the kingdom to come. Now it says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. So when we're going through temptation and trials, Nowhere in these temptations and trials is the Most High given us the green light to break the commandments. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So when the temptation is there to sin, that's not the Most High leading you that way. Sin is an abomination to the Most High. So why would he promote something that's an abomination to him? The Lord doesn't tempt any man to sin. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from the Most High in Christ, from the scriptures of his own lust. So you can't even say, well, you know, that sister was coming on to me or that brother or my wife, she, you know, it's her fault or it's the devil, it's the white man, it's Esau, it's my job, it's this pain in the neck guy on my job. Stop it. Every man is drawn away of what? His own lust. If, if, if Joseph slept with part of his wife, could he blame the woman? Oh, it was her, you know, what was I to do? He was drawn away. A man is drawn away of his own lust. Joseph, he endured temptation. He said, look, how can I sin and do this great wickedness against God? That's shutting Satan down. So let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and what? Seduced, enticed. Enticed to what? Continue to follow after whatever we're lusting after. A false doctrine. Sexual sins. Anger, pride. Anything we're covering. We're, we're allowing ourselves to be enticed because we're lusting. Then when lust hath conceived, meaning in our mind, the wheels in our brain is set in motion, entertaining sin, because we're resisting God and submitting to the devil, that's backwards. We're supposed to submit to God and resist the devil. But because we're resisting God and submitting to the devil, well, what does it say? Then when lust has conceived in our mind, that sin is set in motion in our mind, what is it going to bring forth? Sin. Where does sin begin? Lusting in our mind. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth what? Corruption and death. See? Once that sin is set in motion, you can't put the brakes on it. It's going to take its full course. That's why we have to shut Satan down. And how do we shut Satan down? Now we can end the lesson here concerning tonight.
James 4 and 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. So when we're going through temptation and trials. We have to stay in the scriptures like Christ. Every time Satan tried to draw away the Lord from the Most High, what did Christ come back with? It is written, Satan. He said, get thee hence, Satan, it is written. It is written. It is So the Lord, he stayed in the scriptures. He teaching us how to submit to God. In Christ, when you read, when, when he was tempted of the devil those 40 days, he was endued with power from on high. He had the spiritual power to turn the bread into stone. But at whose will? The fathers or the devils? The devils. So he didn't even use the spiritual power he had to fulfill a carnal desire. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Christ submitted himself to the God. And he what? Resisted the devil. Because every time the devil tried to draw away Christ from the Most High, Christ shut Satan down from the get-go by not only quoting Scripture, but applying it. See, we're good at quoting Scriptures, but are we applying the Scriptures? That's where we fall short. So we have to catch ourselves. And like it told us here, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Yeah, we bragging about yeah, most high this and most high that and the pork chop preachers this and that and this group that and that. Look, be afflicted and mourn. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall what? Lift you up. See? The Lord will lift us up. Then we got to humble ourselves. By what? Submitting ourselves to God. And resisting the devil. So we got to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to the most high. Like Christ did. He's waiting on the most high. His job, I'm going to stay in these scriptures. The most high will provide. And the most high did provide. Tell you that the angels ministered unto the Lord. And Satan departed for a season. He's going to come back. But he shut Satan down. And he did it from the get go. He didn't even let Satan get in his mind to play them wicked thoughts out that them seeds that Satan tried to play, plant in his mind. And you know what? The Lord, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't play games with the Most High's commandments in the scriptures. That's something we do, playing games with the scriptures. The scriptures be going out, we playing games. We not repent, we're being proud, continuing in sin. Who? That's, man, we provoking the Most High. The most, it's a fearful thing, thing to fall in the hands of the living God. So we got to be of the mind frame. I'm going to submit myself to the most high. I'm going to do what the most high has been teaching me in all these lessons. I got to apply it now. And I'm going to resist it. I'm going to shut Satan down like Joseph did. The part of his wife. I'm going to shut Satan down like Christ did. I'm going to stay in these scriptures. I'm not going to turn to the right or to the left. I'm not going to bend the scriptures. The Lord didn't bend the scriptures. We have to resist the devil. Fight Satan. How do we resist the devil? We got to stay in the scriptures and communicate the scriptures. Because the Lord just didn't quote the scriptures in his mind. He rebuked the devil right to his face. It said, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That's called shutting Satan down. I tell you, after, after those 40 days, the, you know, Satan kind to continue to tempt him. At the end of those temptations, tell you that Satan left for a season. He coming back. But you know what? The Lord got the victory. Because he stayed true to the most high. And he could have bent scriptures. No, no one could have seen that. No one would know. See, but see, the Lord, he fears the most high. He don't fear man. See, so why do we do the things we do? Why are we, are we doing it because we fear the most high? Are we doing it because what other people are going to say? We need to be fearing the most high and trembling at his word. Like Paul said, not so not only in my presence only, but much more in my absence. Work out your salvation in the fear and trembling of the Lord. 
That's what he told him. He said, look, not just before me walking in this truth. Look, in my absence. You got to fear the most high and tremble at his word. This is trembling at the word right here. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. And what? He will flee from you. Because one thing the devil don't like if we stay in these scriptures. We stay in these scriptures, he can't touch us. Psalm 34 and 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Satan trying to draw us away from the Most High all 24-7. If we stay in these scriptures and submit ourselves to the God, to the Most High, and stay in these scriptures, faithful to the Most High, by being obedient to his son, we resist in the devil. But if we resist in God and submit ourselves to the devil, where are we going to get? They told us in James 1, 15. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth what? Death. Why? Because we're resisting God and submitting to the devil. But if we resist the devil and submit to God, we'll be able to what? Endure temptation. And obtain the crown of life. That's the Lord Christ. He's given these crowns. Ezra saw a vision of, of, of the Lord Christ putting crowns on the elect of Israel, meaning being clothed with immortality, eternal life. But we have to endure. So all praise to the most high Christ. We're going to end it there, brothers and sisters. Peace and blessings to your home. Stay strong. Pray for one another. Stay in the simplicity in Christ. You know, and, and you know, let us be more of the mind more and more like the, the church in Berea, where they searched the scriptures daily to see whether them things that was taught to them was so. They were applying it. They took it to heart. They were, they were applying it. Growing in it. So when the lessons go out, you know, we got to start really uh, like being of the frame of mind. You know, I got to apply myself and what's being taught. There. I got to do a better job. I, I got to grow. So when we're dealing with adversities and struggles within ourselves, we need to look at that notebook that we took them notes on and apply those scriptures. Because that's where it's going to come back to. And we can't plead ignorance. Well, I didn't know these scriptures. This has been going out. This brother and that sister deal with you on the scriptures. Another brother, same scriptures. But we're dealing with the same issues over and over. What's the problem? We're not applying the scriptures. So if we apply the scriptures and do what the Most High is telling us, in the simplicity of what the Most High is telling us, because the, the Most High's truth is not complex. It's, it's, not, it's not difficult to comprehend or understand. The simplicity in Christ is easy to understand. It's, it's, it's not a complex thing where it's, it's something that, you know, wow, you know, I, I can't figure this out. The Lord, he spells it out for us. When he told a man, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Because the man said, look. To love the most high with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And love your brothers yourself. You know, that's, that's, that's better than sacrifice. The Lord said, he said, he saw that he answered discreetly. He said, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. You're on the right track. See, but we have to apply and walk in the two great commandments. And that's the simplicity in Christ, the two great commandments. When we're struggling, it's going to come back to one of those two commandments. All right, where am I falling? It could be both simultaneously. So a lot of times it's just we need to just take heed to the lessons that go out. The scriptures that go out in the lesson. Pay attention. You know, and, and not... Hearing them shows are like, well, that ain't really talking about me. Yeah, this is talking about all of us. All of us. So never look at the lessons that go out and, and think that, well, this, you know, I I I'm I i do not that's not a struggle for me. This Satan already got us. We always gotta be taking heed and be mindful. All right, Israel. Most sign Christ bless us all. Stay strong. Pray for one another. 
And um, Lord willing, you know, we'll uh, keep getting these lessons out, you know, with all this stuff going on. You know, a lot of the place of fellowship have been, uh, you know, it hasn't been as easy. So what we have to do is just try to make the best of the circumstances and pray that the Lord deliver us from temptation, trials and allow us to, you know, um, you know, seek the most high in his kingdom and his righteousness, you know, first and foremost, you know, and, and you know, uh, most high deliver us from trials. So, all right, Israel, be strong. Most high in Christ bless you. Bless us all.